<laughs> Hello, I'm Rabbi Natasha. And I'm Rabbi Jeremy. Welcome to the New London Synagogue. We thought with Rosh Hashanah now, two weeks away, we would share some of our favourite kind of chauffeur ideas. Yeah. Um, it turns out that I'm going quite halacha and you're going quite, <laughs> you're going quite symbolic. Yes, so these are our top four reasons that the shofar is really cool. Do you want to go with number one? I'll go with number one. There is a rabbinic size, which is the length of your fist. It's called a tefach. But when the rabbis say, what's the smallest possible size of a shofar? They say that it's got to be big enough to expand out from either side of your hand. They don't say it needs to be a tefach. And I think what they're trying to say is that the point of the shofar is that it has to be bigger than your ability to grasp. And you have to kind of like surrender to it being out of your complete control. You can't hold it inside your hand. It spills out. I think that is very cool. Yeah. So one of my top reasons that the shofar is really cool is that in the Talmud, when they're talking about the sound that the shofar makes, they compare it to the cry of Sisera's mother. Now, Sisera is an, an army general in the book of Judges of an opposing army. We don't like Sisera. We don't have much reason to like Sisera's mother either, but they tell the story of her crying out a hundred times when she realizes that he's not coming home from battle. Um, I think the reason that this makes sense for us in the context of Rosh Hashanah is that what is it that we all have in common, even with people that we don't like very much? We all have the capacity to be brokenhearted. And Rosh Hashanah is like a universal festival, yeah. like Hol Ba'e Olam, all of us are there being, being judged. It's about our, all, all of our mortality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pass the shofar. <laughs> um, there are, of course, there are rules about what you can and can't make a shofar out of. Um, the, uh, the rule is that it has to be from a kosher animal. So while you can have um, an ibex, these kind of amazing, uh, you know, long shofarot that you'll sometimes see, um, you can't use a narwhal, uh, <laughs> but uh, you, there is only one kosher animal that you can't use for making a shofar, and that's the cow, uh, because of the sin of the golden, uh, the golden calf. Children of Israel make this idolatrous cow, and when we call on God and say, Hi God, remember our ancestors, have mercy on us, uh, forgive us for what we've done that is wrong, write us in this book of life. We don't kind of go before God wearing the same clothes that we wore when we were so offensive. We don't blow a shofar made of a cow's horn. I think there's something about, you know, how do you, how do you come to shore? Like, how do you have a certain kind of an integrity? And if there is something that you, that you do that is annoying or frustrating or difficult or wrong, like, that's not the time to kind of do it. Like, Play that down and, 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 and dress up in your mm. in your best in your better sense of yourself. Mm. Yeah, being your best self is kind of like this month of Elul where we're trying to make sure that we're our best selves before we come to Rosh Hashanah. So too we want to we want to put our best foot forward with God. Lovely. Uh, reason number four, another passage in the Talmud where they're talking about why it is that we blow the shofar. It's usually a ram's horn, and the reason that they give is that it's supposed to remind um, God, not us, is supposed to remind God of the binding of Isaac and the wording is really specifically so that we should remind God of Isaac's place in that story. I think that we usually focus on Abraham's place in that story as the person who's willing to give something up, but actually in the Talmud they want, to remind, they want us to be reminding God of Isaac who surrenders himself before the situation which I think in this time that we're going into when we're thinking a lot about control and power and who has it and who doesn't, remembering when we hear the shofar that actually sometimes we have to admit that we don't have as much power as we think we have and learn how to, how to surrender is really beautiful. Lovely. I think this video ought to end with a kind of a, a really perfect shofar blow. So it's going to have to be you. Well, I don't know if it's going to be me, but here, you know, here we go. Shana Tova. Shana Tova.